So these are officially the most exotic and expensive fish I have ever bought. And that terrifies me. <laughs> Wish me luck. My pen has a light. See the light. Follow the light. You will subscribe to Steph J. You will turn on your notifications. You will like every video and comment on every video that she uploads from now. <laughs> this is my sad attempt at hypnotizing you guys, which I shouldn't have to. You guys are already here. So Thank you. I'll hypnotize myself to stop being like that. Stop being like that. I fixed myself. Hey guys, what up? Welcome back to another video. So I bought some new fish. I bought them online and had them shipped to my nearest airport. And here I am, picking them up. So finally, now that I'm home with them, it is time for the unboxing. Yeah, that was really horrible. Sorry, rest in peace, headphone users. <laughs> This is probably my favorite part of like unboxing fish, you know, like this moment right here where you can see all the bags, but you can't really see the fish in there yet. So it's still kind of like a mystery. Okay, so the first cutie I am pulling out is a spotted mandarin fish. They're widely known for their beauty. These guys are also one of the most difficult to keep aquarium fish. They feed only on tiny live crustaceans, so they require a big established aquarium with lots of live rock and preferably with a abundance of live foods so you wouldn't want to get one of these guys if your aquarium is still fairly new and not like you know established here i am pulling out a blue tang these guys are a big reason why i even got into the saltwater hobby so i just like had to get one most people know these as story <laughs> they are one of the most popular saltwater fish this little cutie right here is still small but you know we'll see her grow with time so next up uh, this oh okay I can't show you guys this yet so I'm gonna like interrupt here really quick I'm not gonna show you guys what's in this bag yet I'm so sorry but you guys have to wait this is one of the inhabitants that are outside in the lagoon it's just such a big process that it deserves a whole video all on its own i want to show you guys the entire process i want to show you guys how i set up the lagoon and you know what i added there like if i were to include this in this video this video would be like an hour long <laughs> you don't want that i know you guys are gonna hate me for this and i, I i'm sorry <laughs> Okay, so next up, I am pulling out a... Okay, so this was my bad. <laughs> I thought I was showing you guys a green mandarin. You know, like I got a spotted mandarin and then I also got a green mandarin. So I thought I was showing you guys this guy, but uh, apparently I'm showing you guys the spotted mandarin all over again. My bad. <laughs> I was just really excited about seeing all the fish. And I didn't really pay attention to the fact that I showed you guys the same fish twice. The green mandarin is a lot more colorful than the spotted mandarin. You know, it's got these like stripes and like just they're a very stunning fish very very beautiful next up we have another very very beautiful fish so this is a yellow tang and they're just gorgeous absolutely stunning that vibrant yellow color and the tall oval shaped body and those beautiful fins just very gorgeous fish definitely a staple in all saltwater aquariums every aquarium needs one of these well if they're big enough so this is food for my mandarin fish but basically they're just little tiny crustaceans they live on the live rock and stuff once you introduce these guys into your aquarium they will breed so you'll end up with a nice colony of them you know if your fish don't eat them all up before that happens <laughs> later on in the video i'll talk a little bit more about them so in one of the black bags is a lionfish like yes i have a lionfish he's shipped in there because you know if he becomes stressed he could like puncture the bags so yeah a little bit more about the lionfish they look like an ancient pokemon like seriously what in the world something really interesting about these guys um they are a venomous marine fish so when they're being handled you know you got to be careful their venom is found around the sharp dorsal pelvic and anal fins they're sharp like needles so lionfish don't have a hard time jamming those into something <laughs> but don't freak out 
okay? Like, the venom actually isn't deadly to, like, humans. Well, not to, like, a healthy human. <laughs> From what I've read, if you get stung by one of these guys, it just really, really hurts, like, a lot. So, um, I hopefully will never get stung. And last but not least, in this black bag, we have a beautiful, beautiful box fish. So they're called box fish because, uh, well, they're shaped like a box. Duh. <laughs> Something interesting about these guys and kind of scary, to be honest. Despite their cuteness, they could be kind of deadly. When they feel threatened or scared, they secrete this, like, poison from their skin. So that's why this little cutie was shipped in a black bag also. A really dark environment reduces stress. If she would have gotten like super stressed in there she would have obviously released that toxin in the shipping bag and she would have basically poisoned herself and would have arrived dead i'm not gonna lie i was really scared to open up the bag and like just find it dead <laughs> Thankfully, she was fine. So this toxin they release is lethal to other tank mates as well. From what I've read, it appears that if these guys are kept in smaller tanks and they release that toxin into the water, they can and have wiped out the entire tank and killed everything inside. But my tank is actually pretty big, so I'm hoping it never happens. So that was everybody, and now to acclimate. So most of the fish that I bought went here in this big saltwater tank and then the lionfish will be here in this tank. This used to be my angelfish tank but since I don't have them anymore you guys know why I decided to convert it to salt water so I added the lionfish in here temporarily as kind of a bit of a grow out he's too small to add outside in the lagoon like um, you know he'd just get blown away with the current so he'll be in here temporarily Like, y'all, like the whole time I was acclimating, this freaking blue tang scared the bejesus out of me. It looked like it was dying. I was like, oh my god, you know, I gotta get him in the tang. <laughs> it looked like it was on its deathbed. And I was like, well, crap, I don't think it's gonna make it. The seller warned me that it would do this, but that it was fine. Like, actually seeing it in front of me, not the same thing. Y'all, like this freaking blue tang played me it played with my emotions it played with my mental health <laughs> because as soon as i added it added it added it added it added it as soon as i added it in the tank she was completely fine like nothing bounced right up she was swimming around like nothing she colored up instantly so I was like <sighs> how dare you play with my emotions like that like I was worried about you <laughs> I mean it's a good thing she's fine but still like that hurt
It was actually pretty funny when I was adding in the box fish because they can kill everything in your tank if they're stressed out. So I was like, oh my god, like if it's not happy here, she's gonna poison the water and kill everything. <laughs> so that was really scary, you know? I added them all in the tank and it turned off the lights. I went to sleep. You guys know when I get new fish, I wake up and I go straight to the tank. So the next morning, I woke up and I was really, really scared to go to the tank and turn on the lights. I was really scared of turning on the lights and finding a bunch of fish just floating upside down, bellies up. So that was the first time I didn't rush to the tank the next morning to see how everyone was doing. So the Mandarin gobies, arguably one of the most, if not the most beautiful saltwater fish available. When I got into the saltwater hobby, this was a fish I was drawn to from the beginning. But I also know this is one of the hardest fish to have in a aquarium. They only eat live and I mean there have been cases of people reporting that they were able to successfully train their Mandarin gobies to eat frozen thawed or like even a pellet diet and that's great but you know these cases are super rare so I knew when I started up my tank that I wanted to eventually add mandarin gobies in there so I have seeded my tank before with live coat pods you add them to your tank they live in the rocks eventually they breed and reproduce and you'll always have a steady population of coat pods in your aquarium like if you want to have mandarin gobies you need to have a really good population of coat pods so i have seeded my tank before but um you know since that thing happened that disaster that happened with all my aquariums and stuff i didn't know if i still had a good population of coat pods in my aquarium but i have added more in there since then but now now that I was finally getting the mandarin gobies, I went ahead and bought more coat pods. So when you're gonna add the coat pods in your aquarium, you wanna turn off the lights, your skimmer, your power head. You wanna give them the best chance to really settle into the rocks without being disturbed and without your fish eating them, like on the way down. <laughs> oh, and I took off the filter sock for like 24 hours. Um, so yeah, I added them in and that was that and I am still buying them so just in case every month I buy two bottles and I dump them in the tank that way I know for sure that my mandarin gobies are getting enough food and just in case I also like hatch out baby brine shrimp and I dump those in the tank so to make sure they're always eating I always have some type of live food in the aquarium so far everything has been going well I've had everyone in there for like two months now they're all alive <laughs> they're growing they're chubby they look healthy everyone's thriving so whatever I'm doing it's working <laughs> so before I get all these comments about quarantining you know I know some of you guys are gonna be like Steph you didn't quarantine what's wrong with you why are you risking your other fish <laughs> Let me explain why. Even though you guys are seeing this footage a while after I showed you guys the other footage of when I got Sylvester and Toby and the clowns and the anemone, it didn't happen that far apart in real life for me. So I got these guys and I don't know if you guys remember or not, but I did say that like the tank still looked empty to me. I wanted more fish in there, but my local fish stores didn't have any fish left so I went online and I bought all these guys so that didn't happen that far apart that happened like the next day and I received them like four days later so I had only had these guys in the aquarium for like a few days these guys were the first fish in the aquarium they weren't officially established yet you know after you add fish for the first time in your aquarium you gotta wait a month to really consider them established with no risk of diseases or being sick or anything so these guys weren't established yet so that's why i added the new guys in like right off the bat and then i decided to just let them all established together and obviously now that it's been like two months that they've been in there i do consider this system officially established so any new fish that I want to add in here in the future, I will obviously have to put through quarantine before they go in there. And yeah, here's my tank. Finally, not looking so empty. Like, yay. 